What is up everybody, Nier here, and I just wanted to bring you a little bit of a showcase and a little tutorial on how I did this combo system that I'm showing you guys right now. So if you haven't already seen my showcase on my little Shikai to Bankai system that I put up earlier today, or yesterday technically, uh, then you guys can check that out. I'll go ahead and put a link up on probably a little card. Uh, but I'm going to show you guys exactly how I did the, uh, the combos and the combo system for this. So this tutorial is going to be less of a I'm going to show you step by step how I did it and more so I've already got the blueprints laid out and I'm going to go through and explain how I did everything because it's not that complicated. It's pretty much copy and paste like I said in the video, but it is just a little complex and it relies on a lot of custom events. So I wanted to show you guys exactly how I did it and explain to you. So to start off, what we're going to do is we're going to use the left mouse button. For me, that's what I used, but you guys can use whatever button you choose. And you're going to need to create five variables. I think three are required, but you can create the other two. This ready to attack variable you don't necessarily have to have, um, but I have it, so you can go ahead and make it if you want. So the two variables that you don't 100% need to have are ready to attack and is holding sword. I just have them because it fits into my system here because there's three different ones hooked up to the sequence node. But then this runs into a normal sword attack custom event, so we're going to double click that. And this is the main branch of where everything works. And all I did was copy and paste this three different times and set them up differently. And within here, the three variables that you're going to need are ready to attack, which is a boolean, attacking, which is a boolean, and save attack, which is a boolean as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our normal sword attack custom event. So you can just right click, type in custom event, and then name it normal sword attack or whatever you choose. So like I said, if you don't want to use this is holding sword variable, you don't have to. Uh, so you can ignore this if you want, but we're going to make a branch and then we're going to use our ready to attack as our condition. And then off of the true, we're going to set, we're going to set another branch and we're going to make the condition attacking. And then off of the true, what we're going to do is set our save attack variable. And then off of false, we're going to set our attacking variable, both of them to true. Now, real quick, before we go any further, you'll see this combo end down here. Uh, this is calling to a custom event up here, which is very simple to set up You'll just make another custom event and call it combo end and then you can ignore this This is for my sprinting system So you don't have to worry about that the two main nodes that you have to do is just set your attack counter back to zero and then set your attacking variable back to false so back here in our attack combo off of your set attacking variable to true You're gonna drag off and you're gonna look up a switch on integer node and you're going to make the selection your attack counter. So you just drag back from over here your variable list and drop it right there. And then you're going to make another custom event. Call it normal sword combo. Or you can call it whatever you want. But this is just your combo event. So that every single time that it calls in the anim notify in your attack montage. Then it will come back to your combo and it'll run. It'll just come back from here. Call your combo. And then it'll play the next animation in your montage. All the way until it gets to the end. So we're going to drag off, we're going to make a branch, and we're going to use our save attack as the condition. And then if it's true, we're going to set our save attack to false again, and then go right back into the switch on integer. And then if save attack is already false, then we'll go to our combo end, and we'll just call it right here. Now the most important thing is however many pins you have on your integer switch is however many attacks you want in your combo. And the last pin is the one that will switch back to the first. So for me, I have five in total. So for number zero, which is technically one, we'll come up here and we'll call it do once node with a delay of 0.1, just so it fires. And then we'll play the animation that we want. So you just pull off the pin and type in play anim montage and you'll grab the second one. There are two different versions of it. Uh, you want the second one, not the full montage animation. So you just pull off of the delay and type in play anim montage. There are two different ones, but you want to actually grab the function instead of the event. And then you just plug whatever montage you're using in there. And I've named mine Sword Combo 1, 2, 3, 4, respectively. And then you can choose the play rate. You can do whatever you want. But then off of your animation montage, what you're going to do is set the attack counter to 1. And for attack number 1, or the first pin, you'll set it to 2, and then 3, 4. But on your final attack in the combo, you want to set it to 0 so that it goes all the way back and loops and does your combo over again. So there's a couple other things that you have to do. Uh, in each of your montages, you're going to have to make two different notify events. One I've just called sword attack combo next is my notify so that it plays the next animation in my combo montage. And then combo end is where I want it to just 
set off my combo end and have everything go back to normal so that I can replay from the beginning of the animation. So I've placed my combo next right here at the very end of the slash so that if I click and it goes off in between these two, then it will play the next animation. And if it doesn't, then it will just end and start from the beginning. And so you're going to have to go ahead and place these on each of your attack montages in your combo. But then on your final attack montage, you're not going to add the combo next. You're just going to put your combo end so that it fires off. And then you can play again from here. And then in order for everything to work properly, you're going to have to call from the anim notify and then call the actual custom event within the character blueprint. So what I've done is I have a lot of these set up <laughs> uh, off of my third person blueprint cast. So off of your initialize animation blueprint node within your uh, character blueprint, what you're going to do is cast your third person character. I'm sure all you guys have this set up if you're doing anything with animation so far. And then as your third person blueprint, you just pull off and you actually call to your custom event. So for us, it's the normal sword combo and the combo end. And then what you do is you pull off of these pins and then you just type in the anim notify with the name of whatever you called inside of your animation montages. And then you just connect these pins up and then everything should work properly. I have the set pins. You fucking retard, bro. You can't read. A quick little side note. All the animations that I'm using have their root motion enabled and I have the blueprint set up to reflect that. But I can make a tutorial for the in-place animations if anybody would like to see that in the future. Another thing is all of these blueprints, as you can see, are pretty much just copy and paste. So if you wanted to set up other weapons for them, all you got to do is go ahead and create other custom events set up for those specific weapons, um, and then just add your combos and make montages for them separately. Uh, but you can still use the same attack counter variable. You don't have to make new variables for anything, so you can pretty much just copy and paste these for however many weapons you want. And then to set everything up so that it works off of your same, you know, attack button or whatever, all you have to do is set up booleans for whatever weapon you're using. So, you know, if you wanted one for is holding sword, is holding shield, is holding knife or whatever, and then just set up a branch off of a sequence node like I have here. And then just add that as your condition and then have it link up to your custom event so that it calls. But that was quick and that was easy and hopefully now you guys can set up little combos of your own and you can customize this like I have. So now I switch into a new weapon and I've got a whole different combo system set up for that and then into my scythe and then I've got scythe combo set up for that as well. But yeah, I haven't done a uh, tutorial video like this in a while. Normally I like to do the uh, from start to finish and show you guys how to set up everything, but I figured considering this system is a little complex and I already have it set up, I would just show you guys the basics and explain how I did everything. So if this was helpful, let me know in the comment section below and go ahead and drop me a like and sub to the channel if you want to join the family. I appreciate you guys very much and I'll catch you later. Near out.